So we're going to go over the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. Um, we've already gone over what makes it important, but like sort of how to work with it. So the expression that relates the vapor pressure of a liquid and its temperature is this. And it's a complicated equation, and we notice that it's not linear. So usually what we try to do is put things into a linear fashion. So if we work with this, take natural logs of both sides to get rid of this exponent, we arrive at this expression. And this allows it to be linear even though it may not look like it. So if my y-axis here is my natural log of vapor pressure, my x-axis here is 1 over temperature, then this becomes y equals m times x plus b, the slope-intercept form of a line. So if I was to sort of plot these two things, again, natural log of vapor pressure versus 1 over temperature, there's a negative sign here. So what I end up with is a, you know, a line that's sloping down in this direction. And the slope of that line, my m, is equal to negative of uh, delta h to the vaporization divided by r, and r is a constant, we always know that. So this is something that allows us to vary the temperature of uh, you know, something here, determine its vapor pressure, and then from those two things get another fundamental quantity, which is the vapor pressure, uh, the enthalpy of the, uh, vapor pressure, uh, the enthalpy of vaporization for this. So um, it's actually quite a powerful thing, the clausius clapeyron equation, so it's really good. And there is a two-point version as well. So if I only know two points, that is, I know two pressures and I know two temperatures, I can arrive at the same thing. Or if I know the, vapor, um, the enthalpy of vaporization and I know one pressure and temperature, I can get another. So it's uh, at another temperature. So it's a really cool thing for us to be able to use. So let's see an example of it. And that would be this. So propane has a normal boiling point of 42 degrees below zero Celsius and an HVAP of 19.04 kilojoules per mole. So what is the vaporization, vapor pressure of this at 25 degrees Celsius? So the equation we're gonna use is this P2 over P1, the two point version of this, negative delta H over R, one over T2 minus one over T1. Okay, so there's our equation, pretty straightforward. The normal boiling point of this, P1, that's 760 to our regular atmospheric pressure, okay? And the temperature for that is negative 42.0 degrees Celsius. That means at 42 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of this liquid is equal to ambient pressure, so this represents boiling temperature. P2, we don't know. That's some number in Tor. The temperature we're told this is at is 25 degrees Celsius. So at 25 degrees Celsius, we want to know what the pressure of this, uh, of this is. And we are also told that the delta H for this is 19.04 kilojoules per mole. Well, that really needs to be in joules if we're gonna use traditional units for R. So 19040 joules per mole and R is a constant, we know it all the time, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Okay, so we've got all these things here. So really it's just a matter of plugging everything in. And the only thing we don't know, remember, is this. So natural log of P2 over 760 is equal to negative 19040 over 8.31 and one over 298.15 minus 1 over 231.15. And then just to be clear, these temperatures really do need to be in Kelvin if we're going to use this expression. And so this temperature in Kelvin is 231.15, and this is 298.15. Those are both in Kelvin. Okay? So when we... Um, you know, these are just numbers, so we can do the math on this side. So P2 over 760 is equal to 2.223. Now, uh, because this is a logarithm, we don't just get to multiply both sides by 760 and arrive at an answer. We have to do something about this logarithm. So we have to, um, you know, use the ex use Euler's number, the exponent on both sides. So P2 over 760 is equal to e raised to the 
and that is 9.231 or so. And now I've got um, P2 is equal to 760 times 9.231. And that comes out to 715 tor, which if I'm using the right number of significant figures, 720 tor. Okay, so that's a way that this would end up being used in a, uh, in a problem. So I hope this makes some sense. Um, this is a common problem you would see and you really do need to use the formula for something like this. So I hope that helps.